to another edition of U.S. Farm Report. Brought to you today and each week at this same time by members of the National Farmers Organization in this TV listening area. In the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation. During the last few months, the National Farmers Organization has made tremendous progress in its efforts to raise and stabilize livestock prices through its livestock marketing arrangements. This same principle of selling together can also be used in dairy and grain to raise and stabilize the prices for these commodities. Details of the NFO livestock marketing arrangements and the NFO in-position grain sales have now been completed in your area. To improve farmers' marketing and bargaining power, sell all of your livestock and grain through the new modern NFO livestock marketing arrangements and the NFO in-position grain sales. And now Mr. Oren Lee Staley, president of the National Farmers Organization, will discuss nationwide bargaining in agriculture. It is now possible for us in the NFO to give you many behind the scenes parts of the program of the NFO collective bargaining. Certainly the starting of the NFO collective bargaining program some seven years ago when 17 farmers signed the first membership in the NFO and this was signing of the membership agreement brought into reality and the beginning of the great collective bargaining program that now exists under the NFO program. When those farmers first signed the membership agreements of the, for the collective bargaining program of the NFO, no one was talking about bargaining for agriculture. In fact, when we first started our collective bargaining program, almost everyone said it will not work. There were those that said processors will never even sit down and visit with farmers, let alone bargain with them. There were those that said it cannot be done legally. There were those that said it just won't work. But now the NFO collective bargaining program is working, and it's successful. And how did this come about? It came about because the farmers that made up the NFO were determined that they would work together, that they would bargain together, and that they would talk with their neighbors and convince them that it was necessary in this great modern economy and this great nation of ours to work together as farmers for the purpose of pricing their products together. The members of the NFO realized a long time ago that it was necessary for farmers to do something about pricing their products at the marketplace. So therefore, when the collective bargaining program started a little over seven years ago, it meant that those farmers there that were working together under the NFO collective bargaining program from the beginning had the confidence, the determination, and the willingness to work together so that they could build their bargaining power and that this bargaining power might result in stabilized prices for the American farmer in the future. Certainly, the American farmer has not enjoyed the uh, prosperity in relationship to the rest of the economy. But as the NFO began to grow, the strategy began to develop. In the first year of the NFO collective bargaining program, great strength was built in southwestern Iowa, northwestern Missouri, a few counties in Kansas, and a few counties in Nebraska. And then it became necessary to test that strength, to use that bargaining strength, to see if the processors would seriously consider bargaining with farmers. Particularly in these early phases, the strategy was to organize in one area, to take this strength to the processors and tell the processors there that the strength that was being developed in NFO could be advantageous not only to the farmers, but to the processors also. So a first holding action was called. It was called a test holding action. And it was believed then that with the strength that the NFO had brought together in this area of southwestern Iowa and northwestern Missouri and a few counties in Kansas and Nebraska, that gains could be made in that area. And from that area, the organization would be expanded into other areas and gains from each area would be used to expand into other areas until the goals had been reached. But what happened was, in that first test holding action, we surprised the marketing interest in the first day of that test holding action. But that night, 
more hogs started rowing in to the St. Joseph, Kansas City marketing area than I think have ever been marketed in that area. The reason for this was that the outlying areas were not organized, and therefore the farmers in those areas did not understand why the NFO members in the area that I have just mentioned were trying to establish their bargaining power. That they were using hogs as a test commodity. Why hogs? Simply because it was a commodity that almost every farmer produced in that area. It was also a commodity that farmers many times would decide whether to market today or tomorrow, or maybe next week, or even sometimes they would put off marketing for two, three weeks, and even up to a month. So consequently, this was an ideal commodity used as a test commodity. But after that first day, when the hogs started rowing into the St. Joseph, Kansas City marketing areas, it simply meant that those that were in leadership of the NFO at the time recognized that agricultural production could be moved from one area to another, and that unless you were organized over a large enough area, you could not be effective in bargaining for agriculture. Therefore, as soon as possible, the holding action was called off, and the leaders of the NFO in those areas decided that they would go into the other areas that were not organized and to organize those areas where the hogs were coming from. And this is what happened continually as we moved through particularly the winter months and the early spring months. And then as the strength of the organization grew, additional test actions were called on hogs as used, being used as a test commodity. And then we started visiting with the processors. Despite what many people had said, that processors would not even sit down and visit with farmers, we found that they would sit down and visit, but they did not visit seriously. It was more of a public relations visit with the processors at this stage. And I'm talking back in the years of 1960 and 61. Because of the fact that we were not over a large enough area, many processors just pointedly told us, when we have to deal with you, we will. But until we do, we're not going to recognize the NFO. And so it was necessary, as we made these visits, to determine future strategy. By this time, we had had a staff of people that had been brought together. They knew that from the financial statements of several processors, that a processing plant had to op operate at about 65% of capacity. We had a statement from one of the major meat processors, a financial statement that was given to the stockholders, which said that in this one particular year, they had lost the money because they were not able to operate at 65% of usage. In other words, using 65% of their capacity. And they said that they expected to make a profit the following year because they expected to be able to use the capacity at about the rate of 67%. This told us a lot. And so we would visit with the processors back in the years of 1960-61, and we would say to them, our members have a large amount of production in these particular areas. They would like to market together. And then we would ask the processors if they would like to have an even flow of livestock coming into their plants. And they would always answer with about the same type of an answer. And that simply was, we have no procurement problem. We don't need any additional procurement services because we get all the hogs and cattle we need. Now I ask you, what do you say at this point? Well, I happen to know because I ha was in some of those discussions. About all we could say to the processors at this point was, we'll come back and visit with you at some later date. Really what we were saying to them was, we'll go out and organize more farmers. We'll have another holding action and we'll see if we can get your attention then. And so it was not until after the 1962 holding action that the processors really sat down in serious discussions to visit with the NFO officials and the farmers that were elected to represent our members in bargaining. And even after 1962, holding action in the fall of 1962, it was a while before they would visit because everybody was so mad for a while after that holding action. But then in the early spring of 1963, we began to make some strides. We began to make progress because the processors were admitting that they did need supply, that they weren't getting all the supply that they could use. 
and they also admitted that they recognized that NFO was an established marketing factor. And so we started moving forward. We started making it possible for our members to market together. And we started building through meat marketing arrangements. At the same time, we were building a structure for grain bargaining and a structure for dairy bargaining. Because of the 1962 holding action, several dairy processors started signing master contracts. And this would, of course, mean a contract that would give a fair price to the dairy farmers for their production. And so as we kept moving forward in these fields, it was during the late spring of 1964 that our progress became somewhat stymied. Some of the processors were not bargaining in good faith. Some of them were putting us off. And so as we developed our bargaining strength in the late summer of 1964, we decided that we had to make a very critical decision. And that decision was whether we were going to be bargaining at a slow pace or whether we were going to have another holding action that would be used to demonstrate the bargaining power of farmers. And so consequently, this meant that the decision was made that we would have another holding action in 1964. Now, the reason I explain this is that there has been so much misunderstanding about the reasons for a holding action. But I say to you, as farmers in America, you have to realize that we were only using the same principle that every businessman uses every minute, every hour that he has his store open for business. The man that sold me this suit of clothes had a price tag on it. That was a holding action. And therefore, we had to demonstrate to the processors of this nation that enough production was being brought together nationwide so that the, even the largest processors in the nation, and I'm talking about the major processors, not just one, but the large processors, several of them, had to recognize that enough production was being brought together that some processor or some processors were going to start buying this pr production in volume and that when they did, those that did not recognize NFO as a marketing factor, as a major marketing factor, were going to be in short supply simply because they had refused to bargain in good faith. I give you these details because this is a part of experience that was necessary. Because never before in the history of agriculture had bargaining power been brought together nationwide. It has always been done on an area basis, whether it be a few county area, even up to maybe parts of two or three states. But this bargaining power could not affect the processors that were industry-wide or nationwide that needed production for their plants. So this is the, these are the steps that were taken. Now the reason that we were successful in bargaining uh, has been that we were able to cover enough area because this organization has grown from that 17 farmers signing their first membership agreements for the collective bargaining program just a little over seven years ago. Until today, it is in 25 states organized in almost every county from the Pennsylvania line to the western areas of Kansas and Nebraska, from the Canadian border through Tennessee, Kentucky, and then, of course, over to Oklahoma and on into Georgia and Florida, New York, New Jersey, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, and on to the west into Colorado, Wyoming, and Idaho. This strength that has been brought together that in the last national convention brought together the largest convention of farmers to be held this last year, in fact, the largest convention of farmers that was ever held. This demonstrated the tremendous growing strength of the NFO. And to top that convention off, we had a telegram that was sent to the national convention from the President of the United States. This telegram was one of the highlights of the convention because of this great recognition. Although we have never been partisan in our political philosophy, and there at the National Convention, we had a leading Republican, uh, the spokesman for the farm policy of the Republican Party, as one of our featured speakers, as well as a Democrat senator that was also one of our featured speakers. But the telegram from the president said, and this was addressed to the National Convention at St. Louis, Missouri, that the National, to Orrin Lee Staley president, 
National Farmers Organization Convention, Keo Auditorium, St. Louis. The farmer is wrapping up his best year since 1952. His success represents our national nation signal progress toward the parity of income, progress which will continue in the years ahead and on through the decade. The work of the members of the National Farmers Organization has been instrumental in this achievement. With your continued support, our productive family system, farm system can successfully respond to the agricultural challenges of our time. Lyndon B. Johnson, President of the United States. <coughs> this, of course, spells out the great strength, the great recognition that the NFO has received. And why have we been successful in bargaining? We have been successful in bargaining because we recognize that you had to be over a large enough part of the agricultural area, that you had to bargain nationwide, that you had to bargain industry-wide, and that then first, under our meat marketing arrangements, that we were able to start making it possible for our members to sell together under volume sales. When our representatives would go into meat processors and say, our members want to market together in this particular area, and our representatives would contact many and most times all the plants in the area, or at least all the companies that had plants in the area, and say to them, our members are going to market together. We have to get market information for them. First, we have to know if you have the facilities. Secondly, we have to know if you'll pay on true market value. Thirdly, we have to know if you'll pay a competitive price. In other words, as high as any price in the area. And that for this volume, that you will keep competitive. And fourth, any other marketing factors that might be involved. Then, our representatives of the NFO would go back and inform our members of which plant or plants appear to be in a position to offer the best marketing service to our members. This made it possible for them to start shipping together, to start bargaining together and selling together. And so as this volume mounted to some 35,000 a day by April of last year, it started bringing about new and keen competition in the market. And this is what sparked the price rise and went far above expected levels as far as the hog price is concerned. We recognized that this was going to happen because we said that this would happen as a result of the building volume under our marketing arrangements. We knew it was going to happen, and although we were the only ones that were predicting it, because of the fact, and I looked back in my desk the other day of some of the old predictions, even March 31st I caught one, that said that the production in hogs would drop some 8, 9 percent. And this is about what happened. But they also predicted that the price would reach about a $20 peak in August, that by November they would be down to about a $7 top. And of course we know what happened. But as this competition built, and how did it build? Simply when you have a large volume of production being bargained for and marketed together, it means that as this volume builds, farmers, NFO members, bargaining together and selling together, that then a vacuum exists. And as this vacuum builds, because of the production leaving that area, that the processors that have normally bought in that area must then bid with new and keen competition to get the remaining supply. But they have to go out into other areas and do the same. And so consequently, we have built this type of bargaining power, not just in one area, but under a nationwide marketing bargaining structure that is now in operation and that is now making it possible for our members all over this great agricultural area to bargain together and market together. And that's collective bargaining. And that's what collective bargaining means. We also have our in-position sales on grain, now making up a nationwide bargaining structure as far as grain is concerned. As far as dairy is concerned, we have organized at the producer level. Many dairy processing plants have signed master contracts. Information has been given out some time ago to dairy processors, how they could legally set up a structure, to set up a legal structure of a marketing agency in common 
to make it possible to develop dairy sales. And these dairy sales on a volume basis means establishing bargaining power over the great dairy producing area. We predicted, even in August of 1964, that the steps that were being taken in dairy would result in a price increase in dairy prices at the farm level. In other words, farmer, farmers receiving a higher price for their milk production. And this has already come about in several areas, and it will build because of the bargaining power that is building under and through the NFO in dairy, grain, and meat. So it means that the days are here. In fact, success in collective bargaining the NFO way has already been achieved. We're not talking now about something in the future. We're not talking about an idea like we were seven years ago. Now we're talking about a nationwide bargaining marketing structure and operation where our members can bargain together and market together. And so those members in the NFO that understand our collective bargaining program are doing everything possible to relay this information to other farmers so that we may build on this bargaining power so that we may build this bargaining power, not just to protect the gains we have made, but also to make stability in agriculture a reality for the future under master contracts. Because our bargaining success is proving great advantages for our members in many cases. A reduction in marketing costs. And of course, our bargaining program is to get the highest possible dollar at this point through volume sales but also to reduce the marketing costs, resulting in more net dollars to the NFO members. And of course, the whole secret of success in bargaining is to build the volume. And as you build the volume, and this is the reason you have seen NFO members sometimes haul their production many, many miles, because they realize that by building that volume, it left a vacuum, and this would increase competition where that production had left and that by building this competition, it would do something about the price level, and that as this built, and as our bargaining power in NFO built, it meant fair prices in the future for the American farmers. And so the steps that we have taken in the NFO are revolutionizing marketing. Farmers all over the entire agricultural area are now realizing that NFO is successful in bargaining. Many publications have credited the NFO was being responsible for at least four dollars of the price rise on hogs and two dollars per hundred weight price rise on cattle. There's no question that we develop the ideas of bargaining together over such a wide area that the same effect is being felt in grain. That the talk and the, and the actual building of a marketing agency in common in the in dairy industry has already resulted in the price rise starting on milk. And so this means that in the months ahead, every farm group in America, every farm organization, every marketing agency is going to be following the lead of the NFO. Everybody is talking collective bargaining. Everybody is talking about the necessity of bargaining in agriculture. Now the NFO has the experience dealing with the nation's largest processors, in many cases, also medium-sized processors but also making it possible for the processors to realize that these are services that they've never had performed that makes more efficient plants in the processing industry. And so together, in agriculture as farmers, we in the NFO are building this bargaining power. And it means that as this bargaining power builds, farmers are accepting now the idea of collective bargaining for agriculture. And they also realize that the NFO program is successful because they see things happening in the market that they never expected to happen. They see prices going far higher on several commodities than anyone had predicted, although they predicted that the amount of production going to market is just about what it is. But they missed the price a long, long way. This proves that bargaining together under the NFO way is meaning more and more dollars in the American farmer's pocket. 
So it means now the challenge to the American farmers is simply this. You have the structure in agriculture for the first time to bargain together. You have a nationwide bargaining marketing structure in operation. NFO members are marketing together under this structure. It is building their bargaining power. It is affecting price and the bargaining power of farmers under the NFO program is being felt nationwide. Now the challenge is up to farmers. Are you going to get in and really do your part? Certainly, every farmer should realize that as an individual, they cannot deal on an equal basis with a processor that has plants scattered all over the agricultural producing area. But it certainly should seem to me, at least, that every farmer realizes that it's sound for farmers to bargain together and market together. Because by doing this, they can establish their bargaining power that can get them a fair price, that can get them contracts to stabilize their prices in the future and take care of any surpluses that may build or exist or may develop. This is a challenge. And who has made the NFO? This program today is paid for and sponsored by NFO members in your area. They have made great sacrifices in order to make this program possible. They have given their time and their effort, spent their own money to talk to their neighbors about bargaining together. Now, it seems to me that it's up to the farmers in America to say, yes, we want to be a part of this program. We know it's sound. Everyone is saying bargaining is necessary for the American farmer. NFO now has the experience. NFO has proven itself by the success it is having. The prices reflect this success. You know that NFO members are bargaining together and marketing together. Why wait? Join with the NFO members. Don't wait until your neighbor comes and asks you to join. Go to him and say, now with this added program, with this ability to bargain together and market together, the NFO is on the right track, and we certainly agree with it. I know that's what most farmers really think. Now's the time to join and really make bargaining secure for the future. Farmers for a healthy and stable farm economy join the NFO. Remember, everyone will join and support the NFO just as soon as they understand it. The National Farmers Organization is an organization dedicated to raising and stabilizing farm prices through collective bargaining. Farmers, help improve your bargaining power by selling all of your livestock and grain through the new modern NFO livestock marketing arrangements and in-position grain sales that have been set up now in your area. Tune in again next Sunday at this time for another edition of U.S. Farm Report a weekly program that delves into the vital issues affecting American agriculture today. U.S. Farm Report, a rural area's public relations program, is brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this TV listening area and others interested in seeing the farmer receive a fair price for what he produces. If you, too, would like to contribute to this worthwhile cause, send your donations, large or small, to the U.S. Farm Report Treasurer in care of this station. For more information on the National Farmers Organization, contact the county organization in your county or write to NFO, Corning, Iowa. Farmers, remember collective bargaining is the key to farmers' success. Join the NFO today.